Hello and welcome to Stein. My name's Andy. Thank you for, for joining me today. I hope that you're well and safe wherever you are. Let's begin as always with our prayer of approach. Loving God, we're here to worship you. Help us to remember that you're here with us. May we pray to you with faith. Use technology to connect with each other and listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me as we sing our first song today, The Lord's My Shepherd, I'll Not Want. Now's the time where we share a bit of our own story um, so that we can well learn a bit about each other. Um, it's good to catch up with people, but also to, um, to, to s prepare the way for the, the gospel story later, to see how our lives can kind of interweave with that story in some way. So today, um, I wonder, can you think of a time when you've done some secret preparation when you've kind of snuck around um, undercover to sort something out as a surprise for someone. Okay, can you think of a time when you've done that? If you're with me live now, um, I invite you to type into the comments that way, um, into the comments um, uh, a little description of this, uh, of, the, of that story, um, so we can all share and enjoy, um, enjoy your story. So, Let's share. Go. Thanks for sharing. Let's sing together, Good, Good Father.
Pray together our breakthrough prayer. Please join me. God of love, God for all, your purposes are more beautiful than we can possibly imagine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us let go of all that holds us back. Open our lives and our churches to new seasons of humility and faith and change and growth. Shake us up with the good news of Jesus and show us the way. Amen. If you're with me here live, I invite you to type a word or two into the comments that expresses why God is good for you today. And these will be our prayer of adoration. Let's pray. Thank you for sharing. Let's sing, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Yeah.
spend some time admitting our failings to God. When I say, Lord, have mercy, if you'll reply, Lord, have mercy. Let's pray. Lord, you are steadfast in your love and infinite in your mercy. You welcome sinners and invite them to be your guests. We confess our sins, trusting in you to forgive us. We have yielded to temptation and sinned. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have turned from our neighbours in their need. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have resisted your word in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, grant you pardon, forgiveness of all your sins, time for true repentance and amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's turn to the scriptures now. Today is Palm Sunday, so we read from Mark's Gospel, Mark 11, 1 to 11. Hannah's going to read it to us today. As always, I invite you and encourage you to listen out for words or phrases that leap out as being particularly resonant and make a note of them either on the, the sty sheet or just a piece of paper or type them into the comments. So as Hannah reads, let's hear the good news according to Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt, tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, 
What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So today is Palm Sunday, the Sunday before Easter Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. And I want to share with you a little story, and this might seem a bit random, but I hope it will, I hope it will all connect. Now this is my uh, Mario Brothers Game & Watch, Nintendo Game & Watch. Um, I got this when I was about 10 years old and I've still got it. Um, it hasn't got any batteries at the moment, but, um, but it, still, it still works. And it's probably worth quite a bit now. Um, but I had another one of these when I was about 10. I had one called Donkey Kong 2. Now, um, I, think, I think this cost, and the, the Donkey Kong 2 one, I think it cost about 30 pounds. And I remember saving up for this um, for, for quite a while. I think I was saving up for about a year to get this Donkey Kong 2. That'd be worth about 100 pounds now, probably. And um, uh, this was a very, very early computer game. This was about 1983. Um, and I loved this thing. It was so good. I really, really enjoyed this thing. It's um, the, the Donkey Kong 2 one is kind of similar to this. It had two screens. It went that way around though. And you, you guided the character from the bottom to the top. Now, I went on the holiday and I can't remember where we went, but we went as a family on holiday and we flew somewhere. And I remember that when I got back, I didn't have my Donkey Kong 2. I took it with me on the holiday and I didn't, he didn't come back with me. I think I must have left it in the airport terminal. And I was really, really sad about it because, you know, I'd saved for this for ages and there it was, it was suddenly gone. Don't feel too sorry for me, I'm okay. I think I got this one afterwards. I think I saved up again and got this one to, to replace it. Now, in the game Donkey Kong 2, um, uh, people have, um, you know, very kindly videoed it and put it, onto, put it onto YouTube. So here's a little clip of what you do in Donkey Kong 2. It wasn't, you know, this is quite early for computer games, so it seems incredibly basic compared to the computer games that people play now. So you had to guide this little um, ape, um, Donkey Kong Jr., um, around this jungle because his... His dad has been tied up um, at the top of the screen and you have to jump over these little snappy crocodile things, you have to avoid the electricity and you have to avoid the, the birds which are trying to get at you. And what you've got to do is to get these keys and throw them up so that you can untie the Donkey Kong at the top, who's a bit like King Kong. That's the that's the story, that's the that's the game. And I, I wonder whether there's something, bizarre as it seems, I wonder if there's something we can use from this alongside the story of Jesus on Palm Sunday. So in the, um, in the story that, there's, that Hannah read to us, the actual act of riding the donkey into Jerusalem is actually downplayed quite a lot in Mark's Gospel. There's not a lot about it at all. There's loads of detail at the start however, about how Jesus gets this donkey. Um, Mark, pardon me, Mark's is a very short gospel. He doesn't waste words, but he spent a lot of time thinking about and um, describing the process of getting this donkey cult for, for Jesus to ride um, into, the, into the city. So what, so what happens is Jesus says, go, says to his disciples, go into this village over the way. This is just on the perimeter of Jerusalem. Just go, go into the nearby village and you'll find a donkey that no one has ridden before and say, and, and bring that back to me, untie it and bring it back. Um, and if anyone says, why are you doing this? Say that the master needs it. The, the Lord, 
the, the Lord of the donkey needs it. So Jesus is the Lord of the donkey, the donkey king, as opposed to the donkey Kong. In donkey Kong, remember this little kind of, this little ape monkey thing had to go around and sneak around um, to try and untie the donkey, um, donkey Kong. I'm getting really tongue-tied here, really, really confused. I hope you, <laughs> you're still with me. So the, both the disciples and this little monkey had to do this kind of sneaky job of going around to untie an animal. Now the disciples had to, we think, do this quite secretively because Gee, there's a there's a there's a level of secrecy and threat here because um, this was a dangerous time. This was a what this is just before the the feast of Passover, where um, thousands of people would be pouring into the city of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem would be on high alert. And this day was a particularly um, tense day. Now you probably will have heard of Pontius Pilate, who was the, the governor, the Roman governor. Um, the country was occupied by the Romans, in, uh, who, who governed in a brutal way. And Pilate didn't live in Jerusalem. He lived on a sort of a nice seaside city about 60 miles away. But he came back every year at this time on this day. So he would be ready for the um, the Feast of Passover, and he made a point of entering the city of Jerusalem in a very grand way. He rode a war horse and he had a, um, a column of cavalry behind him, and they rode into the city on this day from the other side of the city. Jesus rode a humble baby donkey into the city from the other side at exactly the same time. It's almost as if he was parodying um, Pilate's um, triumphal entry into Jerusalem, um, which was full of military splendour and there would have been bugles sounding and it, flags and it would have been a, a, a dramatic show of force. And Jesus does the complete opposite. He comes in from the other direction on a little baby animal, a baby donkey that was tied up and he untied. Um, and he comes in with just a few people shouting and uh, it's a very underwhelming display compared to the one that Pilate put on. But to get this donkey, he had to get the disciples to go and untie them from this place and, and, and to bring it in secret. Now we don't know, we don't know quite how Jesus knew that there was a donkey tied up. Um, in this place. Maybe he'd gone ahead of the disciples and kind of sorted it out and fixed it and said to its owner, look, I'm going to send some people and they'll say to you, the master needs it. Maybe Jesus was exercising his supernatural foreknowledge here. Um, we don't know, the text doesn't tell us, but somehow Jesus had uh, prepared a way for the disciples to go and get this, go on this sneaky mission to bring this donkey back so that Jesus could um, ride into Jerusalem to show a different way to do something new, to, to bring um, a different ending to the story. A ages ago in the Old Testament, it was prophesied that one day God would stand on the Mount of Olives, which is where this, this is all set, and then ride into Jerusalem on a donkey and banishing the war horse and the chariot and the battle bow. So God kind of um, operates undercover in this story. He kind of fixes up this, this secret donkey untying thing. Um, and the disciples, a bit like the, the baby monkey in the computer game, have to kind of sneak around at night, avoiding the dangers so that they can untie the animal for a bigger purpose. So God operates undercover. God operates in secret to bring blessings to the world. We don't get to see the big picture, but sometimes he involves us in it. Sometimes we are like this little baby monkey who have to go and do bizarre things for God's bigger picture. We don't necessarily see the point of it. 
The disciples weren't told why they had to go to this village and untie a donkey. They, you know, they weren't given the big picture, they just did it. And they must have thought this is, this is very strange. Um, and, that's, and that comes our way too. Sometimes we, we're prompted to do things. God guides us into things that don't quite make sense, that might be risky and that might, there might be dangers along the way, but sometimes God is, is using us because he's got a really brilliant plan to save the world, to save the bit of the world where you are. And you and I can play a part in that, which is amazing, which is amazing. God is doing a new thing in the world, always. God is always bringing new life and advancing his kingdom. And he involves us in this kind of behind the, you know, behind the scenes, sneaking around, going and untying donkeys. Um, if you see a donkey tied up, it's probably not, don't, probably don't untie the donkey. It's not, don't literally, but there's a, there are all sorts of things we have to do. There are all sorts of ways in which we have to do whatever our today's equivalent of untying the donkey is. Things that don't make sense, but God gives us the guidance to do it and it will, it will all come clear. Um, a phrase of John Wesley's, which I love, is the idea that God exercises prevenient grace. God goes ahead of us and blesses us before we know it, before we can even understand it. Um, the grace of God, the blessing of God, which we don't deserve, is given to us before we know about it. And God has been planning it before we're aware. God is always at work preparing plans to bless the world, to bless people and the animals and everything around us. And sometimes we get to do a play a part too. We get a chance to untie a donkey. So may you be, have your eyes opened and your ears opened, your spiritual senses awakened to the promptings of God. And may you have boldness to go and do what God says, no matter how bizarre it may seem in the faith that you are taking part in a big scheme. There's part, you're just a small part of a bigger picture, which will one day become clear. Let's sing, what a friend we have in Jesus.
pray for the, the needs of the world. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, if you'll reply, hear our prayer. If you're with me live and you'd like to type the initials of someone who you want us all to pray for, then please do. So let's pray. God, our Father, grant us the help of your spirit in our prayers for the salvation of all people. We pray for the church throughout the world, for those who can meet in person and those who meet online, that in faith and unity, we may be constantly renewed by your Holy Spirit for mission and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the peoples of the world, for the leaders of the nations, that they may seek justice, freedom, and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those among whom we live and work, for our neighbours, that we may so use your gifts, that together we may find joy in your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in sorrow, need, anxiety or sickness. We pray for an end to COVID-19. We ask that the people who are struggling may know your strength in their weakness, in their despair, may they find hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, Father, we are one family on earth and in heaven. And we remember in your presence, giving thanks for those who have died. Help us to follow the example of your saints in light and bring us with them to the fullness of your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So. May you hear the prompting of God, the secret commands to go and sneak around and prepare blessing for the world. And may you be pleasantly surprised by the things that God has in store for you, the things that God has been working out in advance. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and stay with you forevermore. Amen.